We'll be uh, doing a recent example um, on a, in an intersection that is in Calgary. Today, we'll be going through how to set up the network, how we can uh, draw links and connectors to represent roadways and turning maneuvers, um, how we can input our traffic demands into the software, how we can assign conflict um, behavior and using just private rules and conflict areas. Um, and um, after that, inputting uh, the overall network demands when it comes to buses, if we have any uh, or transit, um, defining or signalizing intersections, uh, we'll be going as well into how to add stop signs and so on and so forth. Um, calibration, I'll be talking about it at a high level, uh, but we're not going to be doing pretty much calibration. Um, to do calibration, you really require a significant set of data, but one way to do calibration is to verify inputs that you've added to the software versus the outputs that are coming out of the software in terms of staffing demands. Finally, we'll show how we can report on results, um, whether in table formats or graphically through the software. First things first, um, if you check your announcements, and I hope some of you tried accessing the computer labs, um, we'll go to our um, lecture. If you go to the course home, go under announcements, you will find that I've added an announcement regarding how you can access vSUM. So uh, open the PDF file and go to um, bookings at the carlton.ca. Make sure that you book a room uh, before uh, you actually go and then try to access the labs. So you guarantee uh, a computer. I did book a room. So um, my actually something is wrong with my screen, but the good thing is I booked a room and I prepared that in advance. Uh, but you can log in from um, a button that will come in this area where my mouse says, add in your um, username, password, follow the instructions uh, that you see in the uh, PDF, and uh, book any computer in the CIBE labs. Um, I unfortunately can't access to this. Let's say maybe I'm in actually. Oh yeah, I'm in. So basically what you need to do is go to book a specific room, change that to the computer lab PC, uh, pick any computer that may be available and you lust and then um, book or select a specific time. So let's say I'm trying to book from 7 to 10. Um, go to 7 p.m. Make sure duration is three hours. And that ends at 10. And verify the calendar of that computer if it has any. We're picking today. So for me, because I, I did uh, book a room already, the system is not allowing me, but you'll be able to, if the room is available, you'll be able to book it uh, through a book uh, bottom here. If the room is not available to get you a message, then you can select a different computer and check if it's uh, available or not. Um, after you are done with the step, in your system, you'll find an email showing you how you can access. Um, my booking has started, so uh, my information has been erased, but you'll be able to uh, find a little button here um, and at, under additional information that tells you how to access the actual room. Uh, you'll need to install a software called VM, um, VPN, if I'm not mistaken with the name. So once you open the oh, VM um, where horizontal client, this uh, is a software that you can download from the uh, Carlton website. Once you book a room, by the way, you'll get an email in your CU uh, net uh, account. Uh, and that will have the same instructions, including how to install the VMware uh, Horizon client. This client allows you to have a, a VPN access to the computer labs. Once you open it, you'll be able to go to Carlton University uh, desktop. You'll be connecting. I'm going to cancel this tab because I'm already connected. Um, and just select the computer labs that will come here. You'll be getting into a room. and you log on into um, one of Carlton's computer labs, pretty much. So what I ended up doing here, I've prepared a folder that shows or contains our vSAM example, but to be able to open the software, you would go under uh, programs and look for PTV version 2021. Once you open the folder, select vSAM 2021. When you open the software, I've already opened the software because it takes a, a, a moment or so. Um, so I've done that step already. And you'll be getting a blank. Uh, this is a blank uh, vSAM file. 
The first thing that you will see in your screen um, is the startup page. The startup page will show you any updates uh, as long as you're connected to an internet um, service. Um, the And sometimes, in this case, uh, with Carlton, um, the licenses or network licenses, we are really forced to be connected to the internet to access the software. But in many cases, if you work in a uh, firm or a company in the future, your license may be a long bill, which is just the one license, um, especially if it's a smaller firm. So um, that dongle will have to be plugged into the USB, uh, sorry, to the computer. Um, it's a small USB uh, dongle that you plug, plug in, um, and it allows you access to the software. So you can access it either or, depending on your license. If you want to um, find out what this license says, you can always go under help and go to license. And it takes a little bit. And it, this license um, window, pop-up window, and there is a little bit of lag up, tells you what the your license capability is. So this is a license that allows me almost unlimited number of intersections, uh, signalized intersections, and a network size of almost 42,000 uh, kilometers uh, by 42,000 uh, kilometers. That's one of the highest, I guess, uh, licenses available. Um, it's unlimited and it contains as well this walk, which is the pedestrian module to be able to simulate pedestrians. Um, I don't believe all of these are very important for you guys. Um, the most important thing for me as a professional, I want to be able to use the uh, VSIMS RPC module. So if you go under the uh, signal controllers, check what controllers you have. So you can plug in external controllers, that's an option. You, can, uh, you have the RBC, which is level three, which is great. We can do whatever we want uh, with the uh, RBC uh, uh, license that we have here. You have something called VAMP, and that's really a program. If you want to write your own signal program and we're not really be getting into this, um, you can do that um, using a, uh, I believe, this VAMP uh, add-on or a supplemental software similar to a notepad file. It helps you write um, your uh, programming language. And VSEG is really another signal module that typically is used for fixed time uh, signals. We may probably, if we have time, I can show you how to use this one too. But anyways, this, just, uh, this is really the first step before I start working on a project. I really want to check, and if it's a new um, VSEG uh, license that I'm using, I want to check if my license is proper or not. If you try to open the license box in your VSEG student version, uh, you have a lot of... Um, restrictions. One of them is you don't have RBC. The other restriction is you cannot really um, save. Um, I think your save capability is very limited. But in any case, the most important thing for us was to verify that we have RBC. So I'm going to close this now. Um, the software is, is um, similar to any or the previous Word, Excel, um, uh, viewings. Um, you start with a file tab if you want to open a new uh, VSM file, if you want to open an existing VSM uh, file, um, if you want to save a specific layout. If you have a specific view in the network that you always want to default to, you can save it as a layout and then open that layout. You can read additionally from other VSM files if you have similar networks and you want to import, export controllers or other aspects from the network, you can do that to read additionally. Um, you can save, of course, um, save as um, your files, and so on and so forth. We're not gonna go through all of this. Will be this will make sense as we actually use the software. Um, to be honest, most of the time what we'll be using is really control safe and save as. Um, you can of course import export between Synchro and VSAM. We don't have Synchro, so I cannot show you that uh, capability um, unfortunately. Um, and you can export it if you're using a macro modeling software such as PTV VZone. If you recall the first lecture, um, our traffic simulation modules can do micro, meso, and macro. VSIM has the capacity to do micro and, and uh, meso, while VZoom does uh, have the capability to uh, perform macro modeling. Under the edit, um, the most important thing for us is not really rotating networks or moving it, as we can do that through the um, network editor, and we'll get to that soon. Uh, but really is, is making sure you have the right user preferences um, and uh, that's uh, typically what I change is how my mouse reacts to me drawing objects. So um, you can check network editor. 
And under network editor, right click behavior. So right click opens the context menu, new objects. To create a new object, you have to hold control and then right click your mouse. I'm used to that setting, so I, I will, I'll keep it that way. If you want to reverse it, so that when you um, control and right click, you create a new object, uh, sorry, you open the context menu, and uh, I'll show you what that is. Uh, you can switch between these settings, between what your right click mouse do and control plus right click does. So I'll keep the setting um, as is, and uh, I'll keep, or uh, I'll have it as okay. Um, you can access lists to your data, um, the vehicle types that you have, user-defined attributes if you want to, calculate a certain setting, let's say speed over uh, length, um, or you want to calculate density, you can define your user-defined uh, attributes. Um, 2D, 3D models, if you want to add custom vehicles, if you want to impact or define acceleration, deceleration capabilities of vehicles, you can do that through functions as well. We'll get to this once we start with examples. We're just, I'm just showing you the different uh, areas in this and what we'll be using most of the time. Uh, we're not gonna be accessing all of these all the time because most of the uh, things that we'll be using will come from the right tab, network objects, because this is really how we're going to go and code our networks. Um, you can influence the vehicle compositions, how many percentages are um, traffic, uh, regular car traffic versus um, heavy vehicle traffic. Every time you open one of the lists, it will give you a um, sub window with um, the data that you're looking for. Uh, we're not going to be doing um, pedest or, uh, pedestrian ODEs or dynamic assignment because we're not going to use VSWAC at all. Um, or we're not going to do a dynamic assignment. Um, this is something that um, you can get into projects in the industry that do dynamic assignment, but not uh, you don't really get to encounter a lot of them. I, to be honest, in, in my career, I've encountered probably two projects with dynamic assignment only. The rest was static, which is what we'll be doing uh, in the example today. We're not going to go into toll pricing. These are advanced modules and management facilities. But again, this, this, uh, VSAM is a software that has a significant set of powerful capabilities. So you can model the impacts of um, congestion, congestion pricing in any network through VSAM. Um, we'll be using signal controls to be coding our um, signals in the network. If you want to, uh, before running your simulation, you want to make sure you're uh, running the right parameters. When you extract your results, everything is through the evaluation tab. Um, if you're making a video, you can use the presentation tab. And this is a, a really good uh, setting that hopefully we'll get to by the end of the day. Uh, under testing, if you want to do testing uh, by having zero vehicles in the network and playing with the detector, detectors at intersections and seeing how the signal behaves to your detection actuations, you can do it through testing. Um, Actions um, is really if you're running external ex uh, scripts, and we're not really going to discuss this. Um, this is advanced modules again, um, and it's really going to take a while until you get to use these modules. Um, again, most of your work will be in the network objects. Links, you draw links. We'll see how we use it. You can set up uh, speed limits through desired speed decisions, and I'll probably expand this a little bit. At turns, when you're performing right or left turns, uh, you can reduce vehicle speeds to perform actual turn at the appropriate speeds. You can define your conflicts through conflict areas and priority rules. You can add stop signs. Um, you can define signals, but you can't really do it uh, right away. Uh, you want to, to first introduce a signal controller. We'll, of course, get through this. Um, this area here, vehicle emphasis, this is where your demands are. Um, whether it's vehicle demands, how they're split and turning through the network, um, how you can actually um, add some attributes for them. Uh, if you want to add parking lots, and I'm not going to get into this because this has to do a lot with dynamic assignment, you can also model the um, behavior of vehicles entering and exiting parking spaces. It's quite straightforward. Uh, but we're not really going into uh, using that because it's really not modeled most of the time. You can get to up input your transit uh, inputs, whether it's frequency or where they stop through uh, public transport stops or lines. To evaluate your results, you'll be using the sections nodes uh, to read what enters at every intersection into a node 
every vehicle that enters uh, one side of the loan, which is a, just a, an imaginary box, uh, the VSIM software will really track that vehicle until it exits the node and will report on it. So that's really what is meant here by nodes. Um, you can collect traffic volumes at links uh, or at lanes even through data collection uh, points. Even I uh, can collect spot speed spot studies uh, or perform spot speed data collection um, at these points. You can measure vehicle travel times from point A to point B. Um, you can measure queuing and so on and so forth. Um, we're not going to get into flow bundles and sections. This is when you start getting into Mizu. Um, so uh, we're not really doing Mizu today. Um, once we set up our network, uh, we'll be using diagram images to import um, the uh, background that we'll be tracing to draw our roadway network. You can also uh, add pavement markings. You can add, for presentation purposes, really 3D traffic signals and stuff like this. We're not going to use this because uh, this is primarily for displays. And um, you can assign uh, display on display and assign um, different color settings for traffic uh, vehicles in the network or pedestrians. This side or the last bit that is in yellow, this is related to this walk, so we'll not be really using it. We'll be triggering the software a little bit to add pedestrians in the form of vehicles, but uh, they'll be called pedestrians and uh, you will see them assigned as pedestrians. And uh, we'll see how to get through this very shortly. But this is really mainly to give you an idea of how the software looks like. Uh, don't worry about memorizing all of this. We'll actually get to use them one by one, and almost in order, to be honest. So it will be straightforward. So once you open the software, as I mentioned, you get a startup page. Uh, if you want to move to the network editor, this is where you draw your network. You will, if you are connected and your license is maintained, you will be able to access the uh, area of map which you can use as basis to draw your networks. If you zoom in, so just scrolling with your mouse. And what I really like to do most of the time, because I can't see sweet names where cities are, and if I'm getting confused, uh, what I will end up doing is go to, under the network editor, you see where the um, edit basic uh, graphic parameters are, the little tool here, and go under map provider, and this is what is this being displayed, uh, being maps. I'll just go to and change it to PTV default and see. At least I can get the map that shows you where cities are. And we'll try to zoom in to uh, Calgary because our example is located in Calgary today at the intersection of Country Hills Boulevard at Source Trail. You probably are familiar with the software, uh, sorry, with the uh, intersection because we've done a couple of timing plans for it or we've uh, seen how to do the um, ring battery controller based on the timing plan, if you remember. So I'm moving, I'm zooming into Calgary, to my intersection. You can always either have your background as a big area map to draw on top of it, or if you have a CAD file, and I'll show you um, how to do that, you can import the CAD file and you can trace it. We'll be zooming in to that intersection, and that should be somewhere in this area. There we go. Now, once I'm happy with the location, this is our sea trail with Country Hills Boulevard. I'll switch the map back to Arial. So click it and edit um, basic graphic parameters again, and go to the map provider and go to Big Maps. So I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, this may become a little slow, if, especially if your uh, internet connection is not very strong. So um, just be careful with using the map. This is one of the reasons I actually end up using a background image, especially if my internet uh, connection is not that strong. And uh, you have the intersection right in front of you. And the quality is quite really good. Previous, the previous versions of Bing Maps were not really that clear, so uh, we most of the time uh, used to prefer to actually uh, import our um, own uh, pictures. So if you have the map and you can trace it, that's great. 
the other alternative, let's assume I don't have a map or I would like to use a CAD file or I want to use a JPEG uh, file, an image file. So if you go under your VSIM example, what I'm going to do here first, I'll create a new folder to make sure I save my VSIM file in. And this is VSIM, I'll call it VSIM training. So under your resources, when you download uh, the resources, you'll find um, two folders, Synchro and VSUM. If you have access to the Synchro software, you'll have the files here. You can um, uh, check them out. But if not, just watch the video provided in the first uh, lecture. Um, in your VSUM example, I provided a background image. So I'll copy that into my VSUM training uh, folder. And if you have a CAD file, you can copy it uh, the same way. I am for to have a CAD file, but the pro procedure is the exact same. So this is what I want to save all of my files. Make sure to save your vSIM file in that same directory. So let's go to desktop and under vSIM training, I'll um, name this class example. So, in the same, make sure anything that's related to VSM, you save it in the same directory because uh, the next time you want to open the software, you don't want to lose that link. One important note for you guys as well don't leave your computer, I believe, more than 10 or 5 minutes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, through a remote connection because it might log off and your stuff may be deleted. Uh, make sure uh, after you're done working in the computer labs to take whatever work you've done in a USB so you do not lose it. Once you log off, that file is gone. You're not going to find it again. So this is where my vSIM file saved. vSIM files do have the extension of IMPX. This is the actual vSIM file. If you want to look at the code itself, you can right-click the uh, file and open it with a notepad file. That will sometimes, if, if a software that, or if a, uh, a ver if we're using a version um, that's an older version of vSUN um, and you want, to, we're having difficulties opening it in a new version and something is corrupt, we just delete that specific section from the actual code in the notepad file and try to reopen the software uh, or the file again. And in a lot of cases, this helps a lot, but this is just for your background. Hopefully, you do not get into the situation, and PTV has been very good. Uh, with um, uh, preceding ver or newer versions reading uh, previous versions. So uh, hopefully you don't encounter such problems. Uh, but generally, I'm going to import this background image into my uh, network, my VSIM uh, here. And what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that location is exactly where uh, the intersection is. And so make sure you go under network objects go to background images, left click it, and that makes background images active. So you can actually insert background images. My setting that I talked about um, under edit, if you recall, this guy lets me create new objects by holding control and right click. This is how I like it. So if you don't like uh, this setting, you can switch it the other way around. So if you Hold control, right click. You'll be asked, well, you'll directly be going to the VSIM directory. I'll check the background image. If you have a CAD file, you can select it or a DW, uh, DWG file, you can select it. It's the same exact thing. Open it. And VSIM will drop it to you in um, somewhere. Unfortunately, this is not a two scale image. So when I did import this image, I did import it using Google Earth Pro, which is available for free. You can download it from uh, Google, just Google searching up. Uh, but I do need right now to scale this image. As long as you are in background images mode, if you again, well, if you just this time now, right click, uh, you will get a new uh, set of selections. So you can add a new background image or you get a dialog box. Um, I'm not interested, I think this is what we did by control or right click directly. Uh, you can delete, duplicate, copy, but I really need to set the scale of this image first. 
So I'm going to do that. So click select scale. It's really simple. Zoom in. With your left click, draw a line from here all the way to the end of your scale. And the distance becomes, well, this is 100 meters. So I'm going to write down this line is equivalent to 100 meters. Hmm. My keys are not working. So now it did um, expand the image to two scale to you. So now you're able to have the right scale, but it's not positioned right. Um, so to, oh, oh my God. My apologies, I did not account for the lagging connection. So we'll get back again to the location. So if you left click and drag, I'll drag the center actually, you can move the image around as you can see. And I'll just place it right at the correct location. And that seems about right. If you want to lock that, so by mistake, you don't left click and move something, just make sure to go to background images, to the left a little bit, there is something called toggle selectib selectability in current uh, network mode. So when you click it, you should be getting a box. So actually I'll click somewhere else so you guys can see it. So do you see this uh, little lock? Toggle selectability and current network editor. You just press that. And as long as you're outside background images, Whatever you do with left clicking and dragging, it will not shift where your uh, image is. This is quite important because a lot of times in your projects, you work with um, CAT files. CAT files are exported the same way. If your CAT file is referenced correctly in world coordinates, it will just get in to where it's supposed to be with the right dimensions. But if it's not, just make sure when you're drawing to include a little bit of a scale and save your drawing and then import it and you'll be able to set the scale the same way we did right now with this image.